Um, as far as the uh, ecological benefits of hedgerows in it, and, and in particular elderberries that I wanted to talk about was that um, that these um, flowering plants like elderberries and some of the other native California plants, you know, like the red bud or toyon or Christmas berry. Have you guys seen those with the red berries in the fall mm -hmm. and say coffee berry, um, manzanita, uh, uh, that uh, coyote brush, um, all of these flowering plants are native California plants and they, uh, they bloom throughout the year and they provide nectar and pollen for, for beneficial insects. And in particular, our bees, honeybees and also our native bees are, are using the, uh, these uh, floral resources. And uh, so I see some hedgerows that, um, that, that uh, people are actually planting in some of these, uh, the forbs to, uh, to try to create more of a uh, sort of a stable uh, flower resource for these, uh, for these bees. For example, if you look at like a, a vinegar weed, um, the uh, bees, including like bumblebees, are foraging on that for the nectar. And then on the tarweed, which is a yellow flowering plant that they're feeding on the uh, collecting pollen for the larvae. So, uh, so you actually need then the multiple resources for both in order for them to do well. And uh, honeybees too, they're foraging on this, uh, on the elderberry. And so uh, we need to make sure to have good, uh, good resources, good floral and nectar resources for honeybees because of the uh, colony collapse. And that's all associated with poor nutrition. And so it's like us that if we have a better diet, then we're better able to ward off uh, diseases. So they're really important for bees. Uh, and they're also important for, uh, for natural enemies of, uh, of, of different, different insect pests. And so I have a poster here. A lot of our beneficial insects actually need nectar and pollen to survive and reproduce, especially in the adult stage. And so if you look on the, this side, um, that, uh, that there's actually a, uh, a bee fly or hover fly. And as an adult, it's gonna feed on nectar and pollen, but the uh, larvae are predaceous and they primarily feed on aphids. And same with the green lacewing. Those guys are primarily uh, um, feeding on nectar and pollen as adults and then as uh, larvae. This is the larvae that's uh, predaceous. And of course, our, a lot of our, our parasitoid wasps are essentially just Hymoptera, uh, like like the uh, the bees and the wasps, and they they really need nectar and pollen to uh, survive and reproduce as well. And so what we found in in our research over the past thirty years, these hedgerows of flowering plants, they actually do attract in beneficial insects, and they're feeding on those floral resources, pollen and nectar, and they're actually exporting them out into adjacent crops. You'd have. Uh, you know, like five times as many native bees if you had a hedgerow versus if you didn't. And, uh, and they're providing some, uh, some pest control and, and pollination services. In our studies, we did a lot of work in, uh, in tomato, processing tomato crops in this area. And what we found is those farmers actually didn't have to spray for aphids as much as those farmers that had conventionally managed field edges. And so we actually showed a cost savings uh, of, of like about $300 a year. One of the issues that always comes up like is a food safety issue and uh, with hedgerows and habitat plantings. And so we actually did a study where we looked at rodents and, uh, and food safety issues. And the conclusion is in the end was that uh, essentially that field edge habitat is not an issue for food safety because it's not a big enough habitat to, uh, to drive any of these uh, rodent populations. That said, two things, one is that uh, Cottontail rabbits love hedgerows, and so uh, and so you'll find that they'll build up in hedgerows. They love them, and they can do a lot of damage to crops. Um, in our farm, to get rid of the uh, cottontails when they become a problem, we just invite falconers to come out, and they just and they just really they do a good job on uh, on really controlling the, uh, the the little cottontail rabbits, and uh, and I'm, they are damaging. I mean, we had like a whole acre of this year. Maybe we had. And our sunflowers, I think maybe we had 10 acres of damage by rabbits. I mean, where they just mowed it all down. So it, it can be a, a really big problem. And the second one are birds that, uh, that sometimes um, birds can, uh, you know, they can come out. And if you've got a seedling crop like vegetables right next to the hedgerow, they can actually uh, eat the uh, little seedlings. And so it's important to have a little bit of a space like a road or something between the hedgerow and the habitat. So most of us, like if you're farming, you think of birds as being bad, you know, because they might, uh, they might damage crops and they can certainly damage crops at certain times of the year. But birds are actually very beneficial too, particularly early in the spring when they're feeding on a lot of insect pests and feeding their young a lot of insects. 
And we did a study in uh, walnut orchards right in this area. And what we found is that, uh, that birds associated with hedgerows and like riparian areas actually come in, in and they follow these hedgerows and then they come into, uh, into farms and they, they actually are preying on some of the caterpillar pests in, uh, in walnuts. And we're finding that, uh, that they fed like, a, a re, they reduced this uh, pest in walnuts by like 40%. So we're actually seeing the beneficial effects of these hedgerows.